I can't get the damn thing to idle. It's been a long time since I've thrown a carburetor. It feels good. So last time around we did the choke, right? As like, you know, the most troublesome part. But now here's the most confusing part. Well, okay, confusing to guys who are just getting into this. Um, the idle circuits on the carburetor. There's like an inverted pyramid of trouble. It's like the, the, the least carburetor part, the choke, is the most troublesome. And then the part that makes it idle is the most complicated and kind of convoluted. And this is where a lot of you guys get screwed up. So here are the symptoms, all right? Um, the car will only idle if the choke is on, right? As soon as the thing warms up and the choke is open, you can't get it to idle. It won't idle unless you've got like three turns in the idle stop screw. And, it, it, well, we'll talk about that in a second. Or you turn the idle mixture screws and there's no change. Everything stays the same. The car won't idle. It'll stall. It'll buck. Uh, it'll do all sorts of things, but it won't just settle out to a nice smooth idle. And the problem is going to be in the idle circuit. So, like the choke video, there's no way I can tell you how to fix your exact carburetor, right? Because there are so many different variations of this. The different, the aftermarket manufacturers, the, uh, the factory carburetors, there's so many different variations. But all of these systems have certain things in common. And if you understand what those things are, you'll be able to find and fix the problem in your own car, you know, your own carburetor. Google is your friend. But let's, let's go over the universal basics of the idle circuit. So, if you look at the bottom of bottom of the carburetor, right? Now this one is open a lot. You know what? I bet you this guy had this problem. Look how because I just picked up this carburetor. Look how far open those throttle blades are. That's what's called a transfer slot, and we're not going to talk about transfer slots right now. Let's close up the throttle on this thing to where it's supposed to be uh, when it's just sitting there idling. I keep going. All right, open a choke. All right, there we go. So now this is the way the, the when you look at the bottom of your carburetor, you take it off, and this thing is set to idle. This is what you should be seeing. There's the transfer slot, and you should see just just a hint of the bottom of the transfer slot. And then this is your idle slot or your idle the idle hole. This is directly related to these screws right here. And what these screws do, I'm sure you've pulled them out and you know what they'll look like. That little needle closes off most of that hole and only allows a small amount of fuel to go through. If you're open like this before you can get the car to idle, that means that you've got no fuel coming through this hole, it's all coming through the transfer slot. Okay, so let's explain the idiosyncrasies of this particular circuit. Now remember, there are going to be variations. Some carburetors use a low-speed jet. Some carburetors, like these Edelbrox and uh, most of the Hollies that you're going to come across, share uh, the same main jets, pull fuel from, from that same circuit. But some of them are also going to have their own dedicated low-speed jet. So uh, you're going to have to do that homework to see what system your carburetor has. But let's just talk about the things that they all have in common, right? So, all right. Here's the float ball, and generally speaking, here's approximately the level of gasoline in this thing, okay? About where that line is, when the float ball is full. And here are the holes that it's going to idle off of, okay? Now you would say, here's the float ball, right? And here's the idle screw. You just have a little passage that goes from here to here. That's where you'd be wrong. You can't have a little passage that goes from here to here because that would allow the float bolt to empty up completely through the idle passages. So the one thing that all idle circuits have in common is that before it can get to the float bolt, the passage first has to go above the level of fuel. So if here's the level of fuel, that passage somehow or another has to go from the hole at the lowest point to above that level of fuel. Then it can go down below the level of fuel so it can pick it up. So basically you're going from here to here to here. Now another thing that they all have in common at the top, at the highest point, is going to be an air bleed. 
And the reason you need an air bleed is because if you didn't, if you didn't break the siphon after you shut the car off, the floor poles would empty out through those idle passages. See, so this is where it screws people up because they don't realize, you know, like I said, common sense where intuitive thought would say, well, it's such a short distance, I could probably just take these screws out and blow air into it and that'll clear it out. Never happen. Generally speaking, when these things clog, it'll be someplace between the air bleed and the source of fuel of the, in the float pole. So that's why no amount of compressed air, no amount of spraying things, no amount of additives is ever going to clear that passage. The only way to do it is to actually take the carburetor apart, locate it, and then what I use is I take the, the bristle from a wire brush, straighten it out, and then start passing that through the passages. And that'll get you cleared up uh, for the most part, unless, unless there's you know, something seriously wrong you know, inside the carburetor. Some of them are very tricky, right? Like, for instance, these 1920... Hollies that they used on the slant sixes. On this thing, you actually have to knock a lead plug out of the metering block. You take this part, take the metering block out, knock a lead plug out of the top of it, and then fish through from there. Like there's no external way to access that, pa that passage. And then when you're done, I, I just with these things, I just take a piece of a, like like soda can and just epoxy it over the top to seal it up again. Put it back together again. They run like brand new. So that's it. That's the big head scratcher, you know. Why won't this thing idle? Well, I just showed you why it won't idle. You got to do your homework, you know. The carburetors are a lot simpler than you think. They're complex, but they're simple. It's still an analog device, you know. So as long as, you know, it's all passages and holes and it's, it's all in the material world. There's nothing digital about this stuff. So there's a problem in there. You can find it. You can fix it. And generally, it's a lot easier than you think. You know, the biggest part is just breaking the ice and actually taking a thing apart. So... But that's it. Next time around, we'll talk about the uh, the, the cruise circuitry, and uh, and then we'll work our way up to the, actually the, the main jets. And believe it or not, you know, funny funny thing is, the further along you go, the deeper you go into it, the simpler the systems become. So that's it. I'll see you tomorrow.